We're here at Messina Half Winery today in Bryan, Texas, and I'm interviewing Paul Bonarigo, and he is the CEO and winemaker of Messina Hoff. Paul, um, how many acres of vines do you have here, and what types of grapes? Uh, here on the property, uh, we have about 25 acres of Lenoir. Um, we have a small planting of Blanc de Bois as well, but that uh, that will be next year once we finally get a crop from that that portion. And you also um, own vineyards uh, elsewhere in the state, don't you? Um, yes. Uh, roughly how many acres and what, what types of grapes are you growing there? In terms of the acreage that we own, we own about 100 acres in the state and then in terms of our relationships with growers through long-term contracts, we control close to 800 acres in the state. And which parts of the state are they in? Um, primarily it's in the Panhandle around uh, Brownfield, Lubbock area. Um, we also have uh, vineyards up in Denison, Texas and um, in the east, more eastern Texas. And actually there's been a lot of interest in the Gulf region to plant vineyards and get involved with Blanc de Bois and Lenoir. And uh, what varieties are you growing in each of those areas? Um, well in the, the high plains and in the hill country um, we do a lot of classic varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, um, the High Plains uh, is where normally we get like our Gewürztraminer, Riesling, um, more of the aromatic grapes, Muscat Canelli, we grow a lot of that in the High Plains. Uh, in Denison we have our Cabernet Franc and Shiraz, uh, a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and we're going to be trying, uh, Riesling actually should be coming the, uh, next year from the Denison Vineyard. Um, and then throughout East Texas we have a couple of other uh, varieties, and uh, of course in the the Gulf region, it's Blanc de Bois and Lenoir. Um, and in the High Plains, although we will not be getting the crop this year, we are going, we are starting to get involved with a lot of the varieties like uh, Tempranillo, um, Sangiovese, and, and uh, we're going to start doing some small lot uh, wines with those grapes. Okay. And uh, how has the vintage been uh, so far in 2013? Well, here at this vineyard, this is going to be the biggest crop that we've ever had. Uh, so th we've been very blessed with that. We, uh, of course, everybody knows about the uh, late freezes that caused some issues throughout the state. Um, but we were protected from that here. Most Gulf, Gulf region vineyards didn't get uh, hurt too bad by those freezes. Uh, but our vineyards in West Texas, um, we're, we're going to experience a substantially reduced crop. Yeah, I've heard that from other growers as well out there. Um, and the first wine of yours that I ever had was called Papa Paolo Port. I understand you still produce that. And uh, tell me about how it's made and how it differs from port, say, from Portugal. Okay. Well, um, our Papa Paolo Port is one of the wines that we're really well known for um, because my dad came up with a method to make it without adding brandy. So, basically, through the natural sugar fermentation uh, and the use of yeast that can survive in high alcohol environments we're able to naturally ferment it to 18 20 percent alcohol and um, what new wines do you have planned for this year or next year sort of experiments that might be uh, sort of in the skunk works at the moment new wines well um, at least the ones that you can tell me about <laughs> Well, one of the things that we are going to be doing is uh, with the large Lenoir crop that we're going to have this year, we're going to, of course, we've already ventured out. We've, we've done the Sophia Marie Rosé with the Lenoir. We do a Sangria with the Lenoir. We do all of our poured products with, the, with Lenoir. Um, but with the crop that we're going to have this year, we're going to be able to um, try a different style. Uh, we've done a dry style uh, Lenoir before, uh, and so we're going to probably try to do that again um, and also we're going to be doing uh, some proprietary blends uh, so that we can really make maximal use of our Cabernet Franc crop because it's, it's extant, uh, huge this year. Right. Um, our Cabernet Franc just standalone we have a, a excellent private reserve and a, and a Palo Cabernet Franc and those sell very well um, but in terms of market awareness, it's, it's a variety that not a whole lot of people really understand what it is. In fact, a lot of times they think that you've mistaken it for Cabernet Sauvignon. So. Yeah, thanks a lot. Paul, I appreciate, appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thank you.